Well, hey dear friends, how's it going? The day is winding down and the sun has entered its final descent. And before it all ends today, I wanted to talk about an article the kids and I talked about at lunch today called, uh, well, the gist of the article was putting all your chips in the middle for health care causes you to go bust on self care. And boy, there was just a lot of really good valid points. The article talked about of the way the human psyche works when we sign up for that health insurance plan, how it breeds a complacency in all of us when we depend on knowing that somebody else is going to take care of us. And therefore we lose that zealous, that vigor, that whatever it takes to take serious, take our health into serious consideration every day. I heard a speaker talk about how he made a list of all the things that he wanted to do in his ninth and tenth decade of life. And he narrowed it down to 15 things. And so he worked backwards. He was in his 50s when he wrote the article. And he figured out what he needed to do as life progressed. What he needed to be able to do in his 50s. So that he could meet those 15 goals in his 100s. And as I read more and more about centenarians around the earth. How they all have sort of different habits. There's no set amount of things that help people achieve longevity in life. But there are certain things that all of those different peoples, no matter their civilization, all do. They, they minimize stress in their life. They're a part of community. They have incredible, consistently healthy diets. They consume very low amounts of sugar. Some of them do consume a lot of carbohydrates. You know, the Chinese and Japanese, they eat a lot of rice. Yet they have one of the largest uh, population densities of people over a hundred. But as I think about this and I remember back to my great grandmother, uh, my wife and I had the fortune of visiting her when she was over a hundred and her mind was still sharp as a tack in a day and age where females now are fighting a one and two card of drawing dementia in their 60s and 70s. And sure, she was at 100, naming off baseball statistics like, you know, a 13 year old collecting baseball cards. And she was 103. And that stuck with me. It still has. I thought about that the other day when I was talking to Camden about why we don't do certain things. When I was growing up, my dad would always tell me, don't jump off that tailgate, son. <laughs> There's so many things my dad told me I wish, I don't know. You don't do that. You don't do that. For the reason of, when you get older, your, your joints go in disrepair. So it's caused me to change some habits in my life after listening to this uh, commentary and reading this article. What do I want to be able to do in my 90s and my 100s? Because I'm going to live to 100. When you say that out loud, that changes the way you live life. What is your number? How long are you going to live? Say it out loud. Say it right now. I'm going to live to 104. If you're going to live to 104, that causes you not to do certain things. Like tonight, I'm not going to go drink 30 beers. and I'm not going to go buy a pack of cigarettes. Because that's just not what most 104-year-olds do. It's going to cause me to try to get my screen out from my face as the sun goes down. I'm not going to try to eat too much at supper, even though I really like supper. I'm going to try to get a good amount of sleep tonight. I'm going to stretch in the morning. I'm going to read my Bible in the morning. I'm going to meditate in the morning. And my workout is my chore routine. And I don't get a choice whether I feel like doing it or not. Because if I don't, animals die. That's my motivation to work out. I've designed it like that uh, for a reason. 
I've designed it so that I have to walk uphill and downhill at least four times every morning, whether I want to or not. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day, and I hope uh, these thoughts bring you uh, some change or how to manage your expectations and figure out how to make these changes in your own life. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about how to uh, figure out how to manage your own expectations based on your personality type. This was another profound find my wife and I had a few days ago. But anyway, you guys have a great night. We'll see you later.